You're going to get serious business now. Now, Pepe. Oh, it's the Inside Star Citizen Review, and we are back, and I am happy to be back one whole month not being with those regular, uh, the regulars, I call you the regulars, that come in here every Thursday to watch Inside Star Citizen and be on the review show. Here we have the first level energy. The family is here. They're pepped up. They're ready to go. They've been waiting for a month. And what do we have today, Pepe, for the time amount on this show? Ooh, 14 minutes and 47 seconds. Look at that. We actually have a decent time frame. You know, 11 to, what we say, 11 to 15 minutes. That's a sweet spot. We like it. Sometimes if it's too short, we don't like it. Sometimes if it's too long, we don't like it. So it's hitting our sweet spot. That's a nice way to come back to the show. Let's see. Inside Star Citizen, Duty of Dereliction. It looks like derelicts is what we're going to be talking about here. Hopefully we get into a couple bits of the what's coming up in 3.16. We will talk about that after the show. And it is so good to be back here with you. Thank you so much, 10 Hour. Thank you, Wook Street. Look at you guys. We got alerts popping off right now. We're back. <laughs> Thank you so much, Wook Street. There we go. There's 10 Hour. Wook Street and 10 Hour bringing, bringing the happiness, bringing the positivity. It's feeling good. It's feeling good to be back. Next time it's going to be black. It's feeling good. Many different multiverses of DG hitting your eyeballs right now. This is nice. This is the way we start the show. This is the way we bring in the new year with excitement. With excitement, the way that we do here in this community. Thank you so much. Let's watch here and let's see. Okay, do we think Jared has changed his appearance? <laughs> what is Jared's appearance right now? That's what there are so many versions of Jared in 2021. We could not keep up. Will he change again for the new year? That is a major question for us. <laughs> We figured we had some cool crash sites already in the game. We wanted to bring a sense of wonder and some mystery. And make the players want to explore like, oh, what's on the other side of this derelict? In 3.16, we're adding a whole new series of caterpillar crash sites with exciting new puzzles and awesome environments to explore. The dangers that the players are gonna encounter in the new Caterpillar crash sites are the laser trip mines. There's a sense of some people have already been there and have rigged the crash sites. Oh. Players will have to get really clever to find new ways to approach <laughs> the Caterpillars or find ways to deactivate them. Along with increased danger, comes increased rewards so we really wanted to make use of the new loot system and give a reason to the players to explore these locations now that we produced those caterpillar derelicts for 316 that was just the tip of the iceberg good and i'm gonna say what i said a long time ago in a land far far away or in a galaxy far, far away. In 2016, what I want with derelicts is that these happen naturally, that when you have these atmospheric fights with larger ships, uh, some of the larger ships, if there are pieces and parts that break off, land, and you basically, the crash landing, your ship becomes a derelict naturally, that these are occurring naturally. That's what I want that to happen. That's where I hope they're saying the long-term vision is. Uh, you know, as far as what happens to these derelicts afterwards, where people are coming into them, uh, we, we'll, we'll be able to get trip mines, we'll be able to set our own traps, and these things, based upon persistence, will stay there. That is what I'm hoping for for the long-term vision. Let us see if that's what we're going to get. That's what I was asking in 2016. Let us see how they do this. We had this long-term vision of a systemic persistent kind of derelicts 
that can go on through the universe, we start looking at what the future could look like in the next few Same patches. Same here, Tech. And yes, I believe they will be uh, We wanted to outposts, introduce the spaceship uh, derelicts into different biomes across the universe. Okay, they're going to pepper these in right now because of what where we're at. You know, I get this, and that's great. And they and they should keep some of these in the future, but I do want these to to occur naturally with players as well. We we'll started with uh, the reclaimer and place it uh, in a Nordic feel, and we explore a uh, corroded version of it, where you start to see the inner structure, but with some plating on top. The spaceship is there for like 20 years and more and just getting rusty. Wow. We have a moon crash site. There's no atmosphere and it's pretty dry and it's not like terrestrial. And that was pretty awesome to work on. Pretty cool art. This spaceship was crashed into a forest. Yeah. We, we, wanted we need some to more eye candy when we're exploring, of right? Right, those cash. trees just really close to the spaceship and also having overgrown vegetation on it. This is great and this is bad. And I'm going to tell you the greatness of this is that right now we need the eye candy. We need it right now. If people are unaccustomed to watching the Inside Star Citizen review here, I do this a lot. If this pisses you off that I that I stop the show and I express the thoughts going on in my large bald head, this is not the show for you. There's the door. <laughs> we love to discuss and we love to talk here. So we will pause and talk as much as we want here because some people actually like that. Most people with patience and with some type of uh, modicum of intelligence like this. <laughs> so we talk about this here on the show. I like like that this is happening right now the artists are taking their time they're peppering it in they're putting it in because we need that when we're exploring we're, we don't have anything right now we don't have fauna there's no animals there's you know pretty much missions and little outposts everywhere we go but after a while you know the scenery the sunsets yes the you know all that's great but for the hardcore long-term veteran people we need a little bit more. So this is nice because it's taken into account that we need a little bit more. So that's great. Great, great, great. How it's bad is it starts to make me think that I wish this all occurred naturally. And we are not going to get that till a long time from now. Like, like Cash usually says that I see on stream lately. He's coming in and he's saying, listen, I'm not expecting it right now. It's going to happen in the future. It's exactly how I feel the way Cash talks uh, about certain issues we get into. It's nothing that's going to happen right now, but I do want this to happen naturally in the future. I want crashes to land. I want the dynamic weather to weather the things that crash there. The persistence should be just that. When we talk about persistence, we talk about crashes as well. We talk about our ships crashing and if there's any salvageable parts or anything that's on the ground that stays there forever until it gets picked off by salvagers and cleaned and sold and the whole thing and in terms of the weathering and in terms of time this is what i would like to all happen naturally that's a big ask right that's a big ask but that's what we all want when we when we're asking ourselves what is the future that we want what is this imagination you know the, the whole thing that brought us to the game here our imaginations the whole ball of wax is we want this to happen naturally it's great that they're peppering it in now you know it's great that the artists are peppering this in yet now but like really deep down most of us just want this to occur naturally we want to feel that spaceship is there for many years and the nature is just taking over And the next is a communication yeah, crash. This spaceship is crashed on the top of a mountain. Those guys there, they're just establishing a communication base where they are at the highest point and they can emit a transmission from there. I had the idea to, to, um, to make this spaceship like crashed and it's a swampy biome. So the guys Ooh. just building those tower to get above and to not be dependent of the tide. It's adding like a lot of verticality in this and it's pretty cool. Wow. We all grew up with the same kind of images. 
you can imagine where how why they crashed there was it hostile or not was it coming out from a fight and then to imagine the second and the third life of them it's captivating it captures something like on an emotional level as we are always looking in, on reddit and reading all your feedback we can't wait to see what you guys will think about those as we produce them hopefully you'll like it as much as we like producing them Derelicts are a terrific way to explore visual storytelling in Star Citizen, and not only make the Persistent Universe feel more alive and lived in, but provide artists and designers alike opportunities to update and change what would otherwise be a static location into a dynamic and potentially dangerous experience for anyone that enters. But we're not done, because what would inside Star Citizen be without a sprint report? Lopsided, like the overtime rules in professional football. Let's get to it. Let's start things off with some of the continuing work for hospitals and the recent work in progress of Maria Pure of Heart, soon to be found <laughs> on Hurston in the upcoming Alpha 317. While functionality will be similar to hospitals currently in the verse, you can see here the Hurston family specific touches that will help you immediately know where you are when you wake up. Now this hospital already feels like an extension of the CBD players are familiar with. Work is also underway on Mercy Hospital for the once and future Love Ski, with gray box progress on the lobby, including nurse station, elevators, insurance and pharmacy booths, and more. Let's switch gears now over to mining gadgets, which the EU PU team has now successfully completed the full loop for and is just tweaking and bug fixing ahead of its release in the upcoming Alpha 317. It starts simply with buying a mining gadget at any shop that carries it and bringing it back to your ship to place in its local inventory, in this case, our prospector. Now take off, find yourself a mining deposit and scan it like normal. Here, we found a node with an instability of 0.91, which doesn't usually make for a great mining experience. Also, keep an eye on that 0.18 resistance. We'll come back to that later. Next, we're going to pull our mining gadget out of the ship's local inventory and equip it into our personal, because it's time to go out and land on the rock like we're Bruce Willis and Armageddon. Or Ben Affleck. <laughs> or in my case, the crazy Russian. Once we get there, we're going to place our device, in this case, an Okunus model specifically designed to reduce instability and then awesome. adjust our waveform accuracy to at least 90% before we activate and leave. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Then when we return to the ship and recheck our scanning results, we can see our instability has now been cut down to 0.54, while our resistance has bumped up to a 0.28. Yeah, everything's got a price. It's at this point that you can mine, break apart, and collect like usual. And in many cases, even recollect your mining gadget to be used again in the future. It's a fun new wrinkle that's ready to go for Alpha 317 at the end of this quarter. Meanwhile, the vehicle experience team has been experimenting in the world. That's of, interesting. Maybe can we do this with testing the vi- I didn't think that's how that was going to operate. I thought that was going to be for like uh, mining kind of like hand mining larger asteroids or as a as an explosive device of sorts to kind of break things up so that you could mine them uh you know hand mine them that that's interesting so like it changes your your uh specs with your mining laser on the ship you know that is that's that's interesting i didn't think it was going to operate that way my ability and operability of cluster missiles that you can see here
as well as cluster bombs, where one breaks apart oh, into many. And as you can yes. see here, because of the systemic nature underlying every aspect of Star oh. Citizen, the explosion of one ends up knocking subsequent drops off their targets. Oh. It's safe to say more testing and prototyping will be needed before the team considers adding such munitions to the persistent yes. universe proper. Let's go ahead and move inside where it's safer and take a look at recent oh, work so of the Drake fun. Vulture, it looks so seen much here fun in its this. final art pass. As a single-player salvage vehicle from Drake Interplanetary, the interior is expectedly sparse and utilitarian, with the bridge seen here, the habitation area, It's that Drake Gray we love so much. Different versions of Drake Gray. <laughs> Alpha Drake interior. Yeah. And the processing area. Oh, neat, neat. Shades of Drake, right? Right, oh, right. I almost forgot. Sorry, everyone. Here's the bathroom, too. <laughs> Ooh, is, is, is that soundproofing? <laughs> yeah. Vet. Shame on you, Tech. We've also got this look at continuing gray box progress <laughs> in the RSI Scorpius. Where once Ooh, the Scorpius. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is the one that looks like the X-Wing in a weird way from the from the uh, slice of it. Uh, the, in the interior of the Vulture did look much bigger than I expected it to be, didn't it? I like that. Did you guys like that? Uh, I, I definitely like that the, the interior did look much bigger than I initially thought that it was for real. Sprint was for completing yeah. the main body and carving out space for all the components weapons, lockers, and more, because there's a lot to pack into a ship of this size. And then another sprint where it's a bit further along the gray box phase. Oh, okay. I mean, aesthetically, the, the Scorpius looks pretty fucking sexy aesthetically. You know, a utilitarian kind of hit with it. I'm not quite sure it's going to perform the way I'd want it to, but... The aesthetics of it's pretty damn sexy. And let's not forget the real hotness. It's wings fully extended. Yeah, more area to hit, though. More area to hit, though. So, you know, like, I, I remember when this leak first came out, and I said, man, damn, it looks sexy. But all these wings, man, reminds me of that cutlass front, you know, with the two guns on the cutlass front to break off every fucking time you get into a fight, and then you're left with two guns only if you're piloting. You got those four guns to start on that cutty, and it's feeling so good, and every time you get yourself in this scrap, those little fucking front side wings flap off every time you get into a goddamn fight and it, it gets a little jank the way you fly it you lose two guns on the front you got two left on the cutty it's the same thing is going to happen with these fucking wings so just be careful just be careful you know like if you're into this trust me i get it it's a sexy looking ship one of these fucking wings breaks off man you're gonna have yourself a fucking you're gonna have yourself a little bit of a nightmare you know, and then going down into atmospheric flight, you know, the way they're testing with atmospheric flight. I can't listen. I can't say anything bad about people wanting this ship because the aesthetics of it, the looks of it's goddamn sexy. Now, you know, as far as what it's going to be able to do, not quite sure, but that's a lot more area. That's a lot more surface area here with those extra wings, you know. So, but damn, it does look sexy. Nice. Yeah, that turret in the back, right? Doesn't it move? Work also continues on the hull. I think that turret in the, the back focuses moves, Cash. on finalizing more intricate details of the extending and retracting cargo grid in the middle and the engine assembly at the rear. Hmm. And then the Banu Merchantman continues Ooh. its early white box explorations for its massive interior. 
Hold on. This deserves a slow motion segment of our show. We always do this, the slow motion segment of our show. We're going to we're going to slow motion Pepe. If you can uh, slow mo it for me during the Banu Merchantman so I just can hear the full fact of it, please. Uh, yeah, slow mo. And then the Banu Merchantman continues its early white box explorations for its massive interior, including the engineering section, which should have lots of nice movement to it when it's all said and done. As well. Okay, that's been the slow-mo section of our uh, Inside Star Citizen review. We're bringing it back. We have to do it every show. Slow-mo section. Slow-mo section is now over. Well, there's a small brig that's currently located towards the front of the ship that will continue to evolve with more of its trademark Banu curves as White Box phase continues. And before we leave ships this week, as some folks may have guessed from a recent newsletter sneak peek, the Drake Corsair has begun its journey through the, to the ship Corsair. pipeline with this look at early white box progress for its exterior, and we're going to continue to follow along with this progress as this most recent creation by the legendary Jim Martin goes from concept to reality throughout About time. this year. About time. Spacecaping. Now, it's been a while since we checked in on the universe. Did, did, he, did Jared say space gaping? Or space scaping. I mean, because there's a big difference between space gaping and space scaping. I, I would imagine scaping. Yeah, okay, scaping. Okay, all right, all right. Because let me tell you what about space gaping. That's a, that's a, this can get kind of messy. Just let me. This is gas cloud tech and the environment teams. Re exactly, gas, lots of gas. Just recently completed a sprint exploring some Lagrange point looks for the various planets of the upcoming Pyro system. Each star system, planetary area, and planet itself is designed with a specific color palette in mind <laughs> at the earliest parts of the process. Wow, and some look at of the, the colors on that gate. May and will change as the lighting passes begin. <laughs> Additionally, the wrecks you see here are all currently placeholder. As the call has gone out to This is why I have been officially labeled an adult channel on YouTube. I understand it. And I don't disagree with it. I don't disagree with it. Create more dynamic and in some cases more recognizable debris for the players to explore. <laughs> yeah, we're on the road to Pyro this year, and you can expect to see lots more as 2022 progresses. Yeah, we better. And before <laughs> we let you go, the teams are following up on the concepts you saw at CitizenCon for outlaw space stations and moving through white box phase, designing the variety of them you will encounter scattered throughout the pyro system, including some areas that share some assets with the colonialism outposts found planet side and trailing wires throughout while keeping the possibility of AI traversal in mind. You know, some poor engineer is gonna get caught up in here the wrong way and that's how you get Vera at the end of Superman. That was a joke for about 16 of you. <laughs> Here's another one. This kind of looks like Hassan's office a bit. That was just a joke for Ian Leland. Finally, here's some video follow-up of the continuing white box progress of an exterior combined with the spacecaping you saw before. Oh God, more spacecaping. More spacecaping. What are we going to do? He's saying spacecaping. I'm just letting you guys know. It's a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing now. It's, it's, it's legitimately a thing now. We heard it here. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm telling you guys, you don't, this, this is why people come to the inside star citizen review. You understand We we have to discuss these things when you watch this alone, right? And you're sitting there alone and you think to yourself, like did, did Jared fucking say space gaping? Is that what he said? But you're there alone and you don't really have any friends to talk it over with. This is what the show is about. <laughs> space gaping. It's, it's a thing. It's a thing now. <laughs> this, these, these pictures look fucking fantastic of Pyro. I just can't wait. So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that yeah. the new derelicts in 316.1 are just the next step in a massive I mean, new journey towards a more vibrant and dynamic set of historical collisions for players to discover and explore <laughs> in the future. That the vehicle experience team are going to give the VFX team some high blood pressure as they continue to explore the possibilities cluster weapons bring to the persistent universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That the Drake Corsair uh, oh, is coming. Okay, okay. And that Pyro can...
is all about spacecaping. And that is the end of the show here. Uh, so that's what he was going to say. Pyro is all about spacecaping. Um, thank you for joining me here on the show. There is going to be, actually, let's just watch continues to here. let our artists explore the far reaches of color and general disorderliness. Now, don't forget that Xenothreat is returning once again to the Stan system. Be sure you check out the website and social media for all the details. For inside, yeah, and they actually listed Delamar down as one of the systems on the Stanton map, which is fucking hilarious. And then as a retraction, they basically said, "Whoops, uh, there was too much fucking beer to be had." <laughs> they were like, you know, like it looks like our devs drank too much. What's what's uh, Stoltz? Uh, Stoltz? What the fuck is the beer? I can't remember the name of the fucking beer. I pass the sign all the goddamn time. Smoltz. Too much Smoltz was had. You know, so that was really funny that they had they actually included Smoltz. They yeah, that the, there was too much uh, Smoltz being drank. So yeah, they included Delamar in the uh, in the uh, newest <laughs> fucking uh, version. Which we are going to get. Um, and listen, guys, Pyro, I don't know how to feel about this. I, you know, like we talked about this when we watched Nubifier's video and we talked about server meshing and we talked about all these things that need to happen. Adding the system, adding a new system is going to be great in terms of uh, layering security. Right, because you're going to have an unlawful system and you're going to have a lawful system, so it's going to be neat to see like the differences. Right, I definitely want to play around in Pyro a lot more. When Pyro comes out, I'll probably be living in Pyro. I want I want to see the difference, and I want there to be a major, major difference. And also trading between Pyro and Stanton is going to be a lot of fun. So that's going to be a huge test bed. When Pyro comes out, it's a game changer. It's going to change a lot of things. It's going to evolve a lot of the systems currently in place with trading. Uh, and with security primarily. So that's going to be fun. Now, if you're still here, if you're watching on YouTube, which is going to hit on YouTube, thank you. Don't forget to hit the like button. We're going to be having a giveaway video coming out. If you're here live, that will come out this weekend, by the way. The giveaway is going to be fucking awesome. If you are live here right now, congratulations. You get the first level energy because we are going to have an after party and we are going to watch something very, very special. So thanks, everybody on YouTube for watching. Hit that like button, and if you're here live, stick around because we're going to have a lot of fun. I will see you on the next vid or stream for you here. I'm right here. Don't worry. We're, we're going to be right back here.